So, hey, Coach Jason here again. So uh, yesterday I posted a video um, that dealt with important things for coaches, especially new coaches, to keep in mind and not overlook. Today I want to kind of take the other side's perspective now from the athlete side and uh, another seven things uh, to really, really not overlook. Some of these things might be obvious, some of them might not be, but it's important to have different perspectives from different people. Um, I learn as much from my athletes as they do from me. So um, this is valuable information that I want to share um, because it may put you in a, in a position to, if you're an athlete or a coach, <clears throat> these are things as a coach that you could use, utilize to help communicate to your athletes. You may have some, you know, and you will come across some athletes who are just wise beyond their years who kind of know these things, who have good instincts. And um, it's important to just kind of be aware of these things, okay? There's a lot of unexpected things that could happen, and as the more ready you are to make adjustments or deal with comes with what comes your way, the better off you're going to be. So let's get to this. Okay, again, do not overlook these things. Number one, consistency, consistency, consistency. This goes as a coach and as an athlete. Your athlete should know <clears throat> who you are, what you stand for. Me, I take a personal, um, I'm, I, I'm emotionally invested in my athletes, okay? And, and it's just a passion. And I want my athletes to know that. I want them to run, I want them to do well. I want them to perform well. I want them to be happy. So, being adaptable for me as an as a coach is important because um you know coming from corporate America and being a salesman for um, for 15 years as well as a coach one of the things you learn is as a salesperson you have to be adaptable you have to be a chameleon because you're dealing with different personalities okay and from a customer service standpoint it's our job to serve them okay just like I I, I want how well can I serve my athletes okay this is the way I look at it <clears throat> okay because I love doing this. Um, so again, consistency. Now, with regards to consistency, there's no magic run or there's no magic workout. It's just con it's consistent work over an extended period of time that's going to put you in a position to um, maximize your performance or your athletes to maximize their performance. Okay, there's no magic peak. There's no magic workout. If you're doing the things that you need to do, you will not need to make drastic changes later on. Okay, and watch the other video. It's going to be down in the description. I uh, <clears throat> the video I posted yesterday because it really goes into detail with this. All right. So number two, and it ties into number one. Okay, with consistency, 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 you're able to kind of capitalize and be a beneficiary of gradual progression. Okay, letting it happen on its own. Okay, if you're consistent, then the things will come by default. Okay, um, you will be able to adapt to new training stimuli. All of a sudden, you'll be able to do a workout that you weren't able to do a month ago, um, either more volume or a little bit faster. Or your, your your group is running a little bit faster on their training run now. The training runs your athletes, uh, you know. Whereas 7:30 per mile, you know, was their average training pace, and all of a sudden it's seven minutes. Okay, that's progression. It'll happen on its own if you're consistent. Okay, but. Everything's got to be gradual. Just because you have, you know, you run a big PR doesn't mean you just kind of you start increasing everything that you do. You have to let the body. You know, races are indications that your your fitness is improving, and then you have to gradually up the training intensity or the volume, but not at the same time. Okay, um, it's, it's very important to not increase training intensity and volume at the same time. Okay, and that's where another thing that I'll talk about comes in later on, which is periodization. So number three, and this to me, I have to, <clears throat> as a 25-year or almost a 30-year athlete and a coach for the, over the last 20 years, one of the things I, I learned and had to learn the hard way, unfortunately, but I'm glad to be able to share this that you don't have to learn the hard way, is longer races require more recovery days. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're training, let's say you're training for 5K, right? Uh, and you're a cross-country coach, and you're running every other, racing every other week and so on and so forth, and your races are on Saturday. And uh, so you come back and do a workout on Tuesday. Um, and then if it's a non-race week, you know, maybe Tuesday and come back Friday. Okay, So you have a decent amount of recovery. You have you know, several days in between. The type of workout helps determine the type of recovery if you need. If you're doing hard race pace or um, more anaerobic work, you may need 72 to 96 hours to recover before coming back hard again for a work workout or race. If you're doing threshold training, then 48 to 72 hours. You might be uh, able to do more volume and recover sooner simply by slowing things down, which in turn can help you run faster. And I encourage you to click the subscribe button 
and the bell next to it so not only can you take advantage of the other training videos that I have on my channel and I have everything from threshold tempos workouts for, for 5k and 10k workouts for marathon half marathon detailed training plans injury prevention how to set the right training paces take advantage and look at, watch them all or as many as you can watch the entire video as well if you're going to watch them so that because the information is not only valuable but I go over everything from beginning to end okay um, you know, don't don't let's, don't watch the first minute of the last minute. Take advantage of all the information throughout the whole entire video. <clears throat> so, but again, here one of the things that I learned is if say if you're training for a marathon and uh, you run maybe a 10k and a 5k, I mean a 10k and a half marathon along the way over that 12 week span as races to not only get you sharp a little bit sharper for the marathon, but to tell you where how your fitness is progressing. You can run a 10k on Saturday and come back maybe on Tuesday or Wednesday for another workout. But if you run a half marathon on Saturday, ideally you want to wait until Thursday or Friday to come back for another workout. And that workout, in my personal opinion, should be short. It could be 400s or 800s to kind of get something turn, get the turnover moving again after that long race. You do not need to go hard two to three times every week. You don't need to do two hard workouts and a race every single week. Okay. You have to. What's important is figuring out the right ingredients of training, especially for your athletes especially because not every athlete is going to respond the same way to training. Okay, I watched the other video. It will be the first one I post down in the description, uh, and I go over exactly that. Okay, uh, It's important, very, very important that you recognize it, remember it, and uh, implement it into your coaching um, system. Okay, Number four, the little things make the big things easier. Okay, uh, Nutrition. Think of yourself as a high performance Lamborghini. You know, you're 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 a high performance machine, high performance vehicle. Well, you're not gonna put, you know, unleaded fuel in your body. You're gonna put premium fuel in your body. So the better you take care of your machine and your mechanism, the better it's going to perform. Okay? And the same goes for sleep. The harder you train, the better you should be recovering as well. If you're sleeping, um, and if you're training and recovering sufficiently, consistently as well, then you don't need to make um, drastic changes at the end of the season in hopes that you're going to have this magic peak. You don't need to do that because your body needs to adapt to that, to any any change in stimulus. Your body needs time to adapt to it, okay? And again, like I said, it needs time to adapt. And um, sleep and shoes. Shoes are pretty much the only piece of equipment that you need for running. Um, I do encourage you to go to a running specialty store if you have one available so that they can take a look at your feet, your gait, and put you in the right shoe for you, um, for your training, and, and then you'll be able to talk to them about this is the type of training that I'm doing and so on and so forth, okay? Because um, there are shoes that are appropriate for all different types of training, okay? Number five. This is one that's important, and this one athletes have to learn. I had to learn the hard way as an athlete as well. Run your race and nobody else's. As well as you're trained, um, you know you can feel good. If you're going to go out with somebody who has a minute or a minute faster, you know PR than you do over 10k, it may come back to bite you. Okay, if you if you if you've trained for let's say a 15 35k, there's no need to go out in 15 flat pace. Okay, um, when you're not gonna, when you're not when you might not be ready for it. Okay, in some cases, in some situations, somebody <clears throat> somebody can drag you along to a fast time, especially in a <clears throat> cross country or road race because there's no real splits that are going on um, track is a little bit different uh, but that that said good training you can't have great major breakthroughs in the training it does happen with consistent work but just be be careful to not run your uh, to run your race and not somebody else's race okay it goes back to tactics if you discuss this either with your athletes or with your coach this is we're gonna run ace we're gonna race this way ABC today and then all of a sudden you go and do DEF, you may be in trouble. We don't want to avoid that. So run the race that you plan to race. Okay, Adapt. And again, the last thing I'll say is be smart early on. Be smart and tough later on. Okay, You don't really need to start fighting towards the end of the race, like especially the longer the race is. And keep in mind, too, the longer the race is, it's... A marathon and a half marathon are different from a 5K. A 5K, you can have an off day and come back the following week and do it again. A marathon, you can't. Half marathon, you really can't. You need more time in between these races uh, to come back. And that's why training needs to be a lot more methodical and precise for the longer races. Okay? Because you're going to be running a lot less frequently. So you want to capitalize on your training. And then 
execute the way you've trained. Okay. Number six, periodization. That kind of boils into everything. Um, adaptation is necessary. It takes about 21 to 28 days to adapt physiologically to a training cycle or a new training stimulus. So if it's a 12-week marathon training program, let's say, you know, three blocks of four weeks each, or if it's a 15-week, you know, three blocks of five weeks each, you know, each with each um, <clears throat> cycle, a, a new a adaptation of training becomes introduced to you. Okay? Because ideally, you want to catch your race on the upswing. You want to be at your best when it counts the most. You generally have a six to eight week window of maximal racing fitness. Don't want that to be too early. You don't want to be, you want it to be too late. You want to catch it right when you right when you catch it. And how do you do that? Periodization and consistency, consistency and consistency, and taking advantage of the little things. Okay. Last but not least, this one is huge. Okay. Now I I know a lot of folks who just don't take advantage of it. But prehab yourself so you don't have to rehab yourself, okay? You do the little things, whether it be flexibility, injury prevention, okay? I have a stretching video that I'm going to post down below, and I have a video that goes over the exact sequence uh, or, the, or a very effective sequence in terms of warming up before races and runs and workouts, okay? Um, if you think about it this way, the weather's cold and you're out, and uh, you go out and run a warm-up of two miles, and then you're going to statically stretch for 10 or 20 minutes. It's counterproductive to what you want to do. Okay, you don't want to warm up the muscles and then cool them down and try to fire them up again. Okay, so it's just something to keep in mind. Do the little things like stretching, which, which to me is a stretching routine. I call it WD40 for the joints because it lubricates your joints and gets them ready for sports-specific activity. Okay, and if you do the strength um, and, and and having coached women and men. And there are differences between the two, physiological differences. And I have a video that goes over that as well. So take a look at that. Um, strength routines may not always be the same. Okay, There are certain areas that are stronger. There are certain areas that may be a little bit more deficient that we need that need to be addressed. Okay, So if you the stronger you are, the more prepared you're going to be, the less time you're going to spend in the trainer's room, the less time you're going to be off your feet Okay, or injured. And... The routine, the flexibility routine that I talk about is also a way of coming back quicker from injuries and being able to speed up recovery after runs and workouts, okay? So that's another part of it as well. It speeds up, it aids up, it aids in your recovery. And again, strength and mobility. The better off, the better you prepare, the more, uh, the better your range of motion is, the better your balance is, and the more prepared you are, the better off you're going to be, period, okay? Um, so I hope this video is helpful. Take a look at the videos down below as well. Hope you enjoy them. If you find this content valuable, please click the like button. If you have any feedback for me, please drop it in the comments down below. I'll be more than happy to, to, to look at it. You know, As a coach, um, I learn from athletes just as much or other coaches just as much as they learn from me. It's important for me as well to be adaptable. Okay? Um, and um, you know, it's all, it, that's how I'm going to progress and become a better coach. I can't claim to know everything and neither can any other coach. Okay? And I have strengths and weaknesses too. And I want to improve them both. Um, so I appreciate your feedback. Um, if you find this content valuable, please click the subscribe button. Click the bell next to it so you know every time I post a new video, um, I will be posting them on a regular basis. So, And again, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the other videos. Um, have a great rest of the season. And I'll talk to you next time.